Today, I will show you how to use Entity Framework Core with a .NET solution that has many projects. Let's pretend that you have an existing database called Simple Invoice DB. You want to access it from an ASP.NET Web API project or any .NET project, in fact. You can use Entity Framework Core. It can generate entities and a DB context by reverse engineering your database. Before we discuss the technical details, let's explore the benefit of having multiple projects in a .NET solution. Having multiple projects provide various benefits. One, each project focuses on a particular aspect of the application, like handling business logic, managing data access, or presenting the user interface. Second, it is simple to reuse code. For example, data access can be shared by two projects. Three, projects are easier to test because they are isolated in separate projects. Now that we understand the benefit of using multiple projects, let's create a solution that will serve as an example. In Visual Studio, I'm going to create a new project I select the ASP.NET Core Web API template. The project name is invoicing.api and it uses the .NET 6 framework. Visual Studio has generated a basic Web API project. So you can see this template comes with code for weather forecast. I'm going to delete them. And now let's make some changes to the solution. I will use a three layer architecture and split the solution into three layers, the presentation, the domain, and the infrastructure. The presentation layer handles user interactions. In this case, it's my web API. The domain layer contains business logic and the infrastructure layer provides component that access the database. I'm going to start by adding a new class library project. I name it invoicing.domain. This project will contain the entity classes. I will repeat the same process and create a new class library project named invoicing.infrastructure. I will use this project to store the DB context. To link these projects together, I need to reference the domain project in the infrastructure project. Also, I need to reference the domain and the infrastructure project into the web API project. Now let's install some NuGet packages that will help interact with the database. First, we will need to add the Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Tools package to the, to the Web API project. This package has the scaffold DB context command, which we will use to generate how data context and entity classes. Next, we will need to add the Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.SQL Server package to both the invoicing.API project and invoicing.infrastructure project. This package provides the functionality to interact with the SQL Server database. So now let's generate our data context and entity classes. I open the package manager console, then I tap in the scaffold DB context command with the necessary argument. The line is a bit long, so let me break down the argument I use in this command. Connection specifies the connection string to the database we want to generate the data context and entity classes for. In my case, I'm using a local SQL Server instance with a database name Simple Invoice DB. Provider specifies the database provider we want to use. Because I'm using SQL Server, I specify the SQL Server provider. Output dir specify the output directory for the generated entity classes. In my case, I'll put them at the root of the domain project. Namespace specifies the namespace of the generated entity classes. 
If you don't specify a namespace, here of course we'll use the namespace of the startup project. Context dir specifies the directory for the generated data context. And context namespace specifies the namespace for the generated data context. So after executing the command, you can see that the DB context has been generated with the right namespace. The NED classes have been generated correctly too. The DB context has been generated with the connection string. So it's always a good practice to store the connection string in the app settings file. So let's move it. If using the command line interface isn't your thing, you can use a Visual Studio extension called EFCore Power Tools. I've already installed mine, you can get it from the extensions marketplace. Now, I can right click on the startup project, which is the API, and select EFCore Power Tools, then Reverse Engineer. In the Reverse Engineer dialog box, I select the connection string to the database. If you don't have a connection string, you can always add one. On the next screen, I can customize various settings for generating the data context and entity classes. I will use the same I used with the scaffold DB context command. So I set the output directory for entity classes, the namespace for entity classes, the output directory for the DB context and its namespace. Finally, I also check this checkbox right here to tell the EF core power tool that I don't want to pluralize the entity names. There are more settings, but this will do the trick. So now I can generate the classes. As you can see, we get the same result. The DB context has been generated in the right project with the right namespace, and the entity classes have also been generated in the right project. And that's it for this tutorial. Hit the like button if you get any value from this. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for future videos. I'll see you in the next one.